Now, as to the question of what does that method actually mean, <laughs> mean, uh, what is the meaning of it, we need to now turn over the page and have a look at an actual data set. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, I tell a lie. Um, uh, yeah, no, we can do it. Yeah, let's, let's go to this actual data set. Okay, here we go. So, we're going to consider this data and its line of best fit, right? Now, can you see, this is the data set I showed you before. So, it's got those eight data points and I've got four above and four below. Okay. Now, if you've got two colors here, two colors of pens, this will be a lot easier. Um, I can cheat because I have every color um, here. What we're going to do is show where all of these data points deviate from our line of best fit. Now, to indicate the differences, right, I'm going to show all my ones above the line of best fit in uh, red, I guess, and all the ones below in blue, just so I can signify for myself that there's differences here. Okay. So, with my red color, I'm going to say, well, look at this data point. Can you see that's where it, it uh, uh, sorry, it's not very uh, strong. That's where it deviates from the line of best fit. It's a vertical line, right? That's the difference, okay? And then I've got another data point. Again, this is also up above. This one in here is pretty close. And then I've got one last one over here, like so. And you can use a rule for this because the more accurate you'll be, the better, okay? These are all my data points above, and then I'm going to switch over to blue to do my data points beneath the line of best fit. So you can see them here, 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 and over here. Okay. Now what I want to do, uh, or rather what the um, correlation coefficient does, you know the whole squaring and square root business? What it does is not only standardize, but it also says the further away you are, the more of a difference you make. So this is sort of to do, connected to the idea of an outlier, it really throws you out by a far distance, okay? So what we do is we don't actually add up just those distances, right? We actually add up the square of those distances and we wanna try and minimize those. So if you can imagine, let's go back to this first one, right? I wanna draw a square that has that side length. So you can actually do this attached to that side, right? I'm gonna draw a square that looks like this. Can you see, I know mine's approximate, you'll be able to do a better job than I will, but this square now represents how far away are you as a difference, right? And then you can see there's one underneath here. Again, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna eyeball this. It's gonna be roughly there, I'd say, there, and there. If you really wanna um, be very neat, you can sort of like color this in. And what you can see I'm getting here is a representation, if I add all of these up, of again, how much we collectively deviate from this line of best fit. And we're gonna continue this, right? Um, in order to do all these squares, you can see all my lines above because of where these differences go. Your squares on top, they all draw to the left. Okay, so I'm gonna draw another one like so. These squares go in that direction. This one's a small one. And then I've got one more over here, square, like so. And again, like I said, if you want to make it a little more obvious, you can sort of color it in like so, just so you can see what's happening. So these are all of my differences above. And then what I want to do is position my line of best fit so that all of my differences below kind of cancel out, right? So here's another square. Where's this one going to go? Somewhere about there. Sorry, that's a bit messy. I'm trying to do this in a timely fashion for you guys. This is the biggest square that I can see over here. And just like before, I'm going to color these. Now, the reason why this is important is actually because this picture will answer two questions for us. Number one, it will answer this question of what does it actually mean, this correlation coefficient? What is it calculating? And number two, it will actually give us a technical definition for the line of best fit. The line of best fit, like even the name, it's like, oh, it fits roughly, right? But actually, the technical definition for it is a very long name, which some of you might have encountered before, um, but this is the meaning of it, okay? So I'll come back to this picture in a second if you're still drawing, but I'm gonna turn back to the original side of my piece of paper, and I'm now gonna give you the definition, technically speaking, for the line of best fit. The line of best fit is actually called the least squares regression line. That's a mouthful. You can see why we call it, colloquially, a line of best fit, because it's much easier to say. However, the least squares regression line is a much better definition. 
The least squares regression line is that line that takes all those squares that we drew before, those eight squares, and it makes them as small as possible. And that's why it's literally called the least squares. We're trying to minimize the difference that we get from all of those squares. Or you might say the, the difference sum of all the squares. Because each of those squares, when you add them all up, represent more and more differences and they kind of like stack up on each other, right? So calling it the least squares is there's some line that if you position it there, the squares in total add up to the smallest amount. So that's the least squares part. When you have a look at this next part of the definition or the name, regression, right? Now there's uh, a word in English that we use a lot more frequently than regression, which actually kind of gives you, I think, the key to understanding what regression is all about, statistically anyway. Uh, you know, when you do something and then you're like, in your mind, you go back to when you did that and you wish you hadn't had done it, what do we call that? Uh, we call that regret, right? When you regret something, is when you go back in your mind to that thing and wish you hadn't have done it, right? Now, the idea of regression, you can see even the word and its similarity tells you these things are connected. The word regression or regress is to go back to. And that's what this least squares is about. Can you see that those squares, they measure for you the distance back to that line of best fit? So the least squares regression line is trying to say, when you regress back to that line of best fit, which is the line that will make those squares the smallest? So the least squares part means, can we minimize? And the regression part means, like what are you minimizing? And the answer is that distance, those differences, all of those squares added up together to get you back to the line. So even though this is a very long, awkward definition, once you understand what each of the individual pieces are, you can see it literally just means what it says. So you can see now we're ready kind of to finish out everything and, and tie this all in a neat bow. Um, what is like the line of best fit? What does it mean? Why does the line of best fit fit best? And the answer is because it minimizes those squares. It minimizes those dis differences. Whoopsie daisy. Minimizes the differences or the deviations from that line. And it represents that with the areas of those squares added up together. And that's why it's called the least squares regression line. Uh, what is the correlation coefficient measure? Well, you can see on a normal data set, unless you've got like perfectly along the line, you're gonna have some deviations. You're gonna have some differences. These squares here are going to add up to something that isn't zero. So what is the correlation coefficient measure? It's, well, how much are those squares deviating? It's what uh, or how much are all the deviations totaling to. And so you can see in a single number, it captures all of those different, like uh, added up together. The bigger those squares are, if you can imagine, you know, having some not very accurately draw drawn line of best fit like so, if I had some, uh, you know, here's a distance here, and you can see the square that I would get out of this would be enormous. Uh, it's bigger than all the other squares put together that I put on there. So this here would have this huge correlation, um, or rather a small correlation because it's not correlating very well. Uh, and that's probably the trickiest part of this actually, that we would say, um, you might remember when we standardized this idea here, we go from negative one all the way to one, and zero is a small correlation uh, it's no correlation, but it comes from having very large differences. So big squares means small correlations. So we would say that those are inversely proportional to each other. Uh, and this gives us our sort of last bit that we were missing. What does the method actually mean? Well, just see the least squares regression line. What we are trying to define is from that least squares regression line, tell me the magnitude of all those squares. Can we quantify it in a standardized way? And that's all R is about. Uh, and by the way, that was my, that's my theory when we say like, oh, why is it R? Why is it that letter? Um, I think it has to do with regression, but you know, a lot of things are like that. Why is gradient M? Why is the unknown X? There's just some mysteries in maths because of the history of how we came up with these things. So I hope that makes sense. It's a big concept as you can see, um, but once you sort of tease out this formula and all the bits of it, it actually, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, and you don't have to fret about memorizing this awkward thing. Um, or even using it, you know, you might have to do this in an assignment where you can refer to it, but in the context of an exam, um, you wouldn't be under the pressure of tabulating all of that data.